What happened next will shock you. Welcome back to the city of Shamoy. At the end of our last episode, I discussed adding a zoo. Today we are going to build the new Jeffrey Zoo and a smaller tourist area to support it. This will be adding on to our already robust tourism aspect of our fair city. There's our 69 Palms, the last area we just grew into, an expansion area, nice little suburb. This is roughly 90 minutes of gameplay in a concise 20 minutes. Don't forget that we have a playlist to keep updated on older chapters as the story of Shimoy continues. Let's get started. Here I extend Alpine Street down uh, quite a bit of a distance. I want to try to take, a, working our way down towards the river side, the riverfront itself. That's eventually where we're going to build most likely an additional um, commerce area and maybe some additional houses. I would like to put a river walk in technically. Um, pedestrian bridges across spanning the bridge itself. Here is a longer road that we take off from below Zesty Commerce in that new park area that we added last time uh, as we extend that further out. Here this is me trying to plan out. I wanted to link up to that bottom hub of Zesty Commerce uh, and eventually we will link it up but here this is me trying to plan out uh, as best I possibly can. I have a good idea roughly in my head of what I'd like the area to be and I strongly recommend that as you're building areas like this and, and, and providing expansions. Yes, I know that I've talked multiple times about trying to break up the density and uh, and prevent gridding. Um, I'm using a little bit more gridding just so that I can get this area here. Once this first area is done and we've got enough people uh, in the city, living in the city, and enough money in the coffers, then we can further extend out. That is going to be the next areas um, that we're going to be working towards as we add in uh, farming and forestry industrial areas to help really robustly add on to the city. So this is me trying to add in and make sure I have enough area if I can for walkway pathing. The walkways are very important um, for the city itself. So I decided to leave that there and decided to drag it across here instead. So. Um, the idea is you want to try to plan out once especially you have the landscaping you want to try to plan out your walk path walkways as much as possible if you can because it's going to be beneficial for your people um, to get around and that any person you can get to walk or ride their bike is a person who does not have to be on the road and if that person does not have to be on the road that frees up all of that road for transportation public transportation it frees it up for our tourism buses it frees it up for the uh, industrial traffic to get in and out for imports and exports so you really want to think about those things going forward because they are going to be beneficial in the future um, for your city growth but also to prevent you from handling um, or having to deal with issues where you get bottlenecks and that will always happen 99 percent of the time that will happen you just have to be able to recognize them as quickly as possible and or deal with them right then in situ or you have to plan ahead so this is me adding out the area because i do want to have like i said a lot uh, i want to extend the zesty commerce area down or mid have it bleed into and blend with the um tourism area which we will establish we'll put a district down as well here very shortly this is me planning out the actual zoo district itself once that's been added and its default name of olive grounds has been established I am speeding this part up so that I can start showing as we're going to put it in. It's going to start at $10. We're going to rename it to the Jeffrey Zoo. It currently has 2,879 cells, just under 3,000 cells. A little bit of entertainment here, but by the end of the episode, uh, and we'll look through these park policies, we'll revisit these here very shortly. So I had some basic ones and get started. I want to put down the zoo main gate and I want it off of this off of the main strip so that larger uh, collector road is there to help collect for the tourism uh, traffic as well as everything else so this is our first level one zoo for Jeffrey Zoo 
and I'm going to go through and adding the infrastructure in as well as adding additional parking on each side. Now again in City Skylines 1 and City Skylines Remastered, excuse me, uh, the parking structures themselves that I've added here, for example, these open parking lots, those are also considered park assets and they will have people who just want to visit the park itself, that's that parking lot itself. It's weird, but using it as an additional prop, so to speak, to complement the zoo, in my personal opinion, is going to be beneficial. The reason I've added two of them is because I do really want to have a very large zoo once it's all complete. Now, if you played City Skylines 2 or 1, excuse me, or maybe you haven't, uh, so that you understand how, like, the zoo is part of the parks, um, uh, parks DLC that has been added uh, to City Skylines 1. So I have that, that Park Life DLC there, as you can see. Um, the Park Life DLC does have a, a level up system. So as you continue to um, gather more people to show up to your zoo, in this case that we're building, then those people are going to, the zoo itself, the park area is going to level up. And that's what we're going to eventually want, is we want a level five zoo as best we possibly can get it. Um, we may have to stop building closer towards the the river to really uh, view that beautifulness because I may have it stre stretch around and potentially even over that collector road. I'm not entirely sure yet. We're going to build into it. So this is adding the public squares and then we are adding, I think those are the bathrooms. Basically, I want to make sure it's kind of robust a cafe information stands, people can get around souvenir shops, one here and one there, somewhat mirroring, there's the restrooms here, sorry. Throw that down, oh it is, uh, it's that. And you can add, and I'm adding on the zoo pathways with decorations, um, because I like the tree aspect, I like to have the additional benches and the uh, trash cans and everything else, the recycle bins, those are all part and partial to having those decorations already pre-established on that pathway. This is me trying to figure out where one of our main exhibits is going to go. So I add the bird cage, the aviary sanctuary, right here. And then the antelope enclosure, decide to add a little further. I don't want to go too close to that collector road. And then the big moose uh, exhibit, this one's a giant one. So I'm trying to figure out how best to fit it in. Now I noticed that the reason why it doesn't want to snap is because it has its own pathways built into this specific asset. Some of the assets are like that. I may have to come back here and revisit how we're going to get this connection set up and move some stuff around, but that's eventually what you do. That's one of the best things about having a city that grows like this. Four different connections in and try to get it all set up here. As of right now, these are all of the exhibits that I can put into the zoo at its current level. As we get more people to visit and show up, then that will continue to grow. So now we take a look at adding an additional side gate off of the collector road um, to see if we can drum up even more people across the board as the development behind it continues to grow too. So I have to remodel a couple of these different pathways um, to get them in and uh, as City Planner Plays mentions, don't let uh, perfect be the enemy of good. So I decide that uh, it doesn't have to be a 100% 90 degree angle and just go with it. And sometimes you just want to do that. Kind of give it a little bit of personality. Why does it slant like that? Just because it does. That's how it went down. I can add a little bit of trees over there, a little pathway maybe. Maybe not a pathway, but some little uh, decoration too. Now we're like, taking a look over here at the tourism district that we're getting ready to add to. So I'm going to upgrade these pathways here to make them a little bit more amenable to the rest of the city as it has been progressed. And I've continued to build on to the walking pathways there to add a little bit more greenery. Doing so sparingly, or at least within some modicum of self-control, um, is beneficial because it adds city value right that's the most important thing is that that eventually will add city value not only does it allow the sims to walk and prevent them from having to drive but it also gives them some peace of mind it breaks up some of the noise 
and uh, it just adds more value overall for the uh, denizens of your little town. So we don't make the same mistake again. Before it gets too deep into the hole, I actually change it to the university city district style. This will change the styles of all of the buildings that are added into it because we've already chosen a tourism aspect as well. As I've been keeping the clock running on the uh, time level here, we're at attractiveness of 600. So far, 37 out of 500 visitors to get to our level two. 875 out of 275 entertainment until the next level. So we're well, well above. Now we just need to get people here so that we can start making profit and leveling up the zoo area. We did add in some additional um, tourism hotel so this is one of those hotels we put in there but i did want to try to add on to it to give it a little bit more of a nature feel I will be adding a lot more decorations to fill in this green space, um, not only to make it healthier and give people additional options, but to use taking advantage of the additional decorations that I have available across all the DLC and everything else that I have too. I hope that you'll stick by as we continue to grow the city and grow onto this beautiful zoo that we've started. Before the episode ends, you'll see me changing a lot of the tree colors in here too, and that'll probably change as we continue to go. Maybe break up some of the density of the buildings right near the beginning of the main gate or, and give a little bit more uh, adequate space. Here we are applying the park policies, animal ethics, advertising campaign, night tours, and recycled garbage. That will help us grow and save money. We're not quite done yet with the city, at least in this episode, so thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to watch this episode. I very much appreciate it, and um, I know we'll go back and revisit some of the areas that we've done in prior episodes in the far, far future. And hopefully, if you have suggestions, don't hesitate to comment down below. If there are things that you think I should improve or rename, let me know in the comments down below. Um, is this the kind of game that you're interested in? Do you like the slower, laid-back type of thing? Um, I plan on adding more narrative features uh, to my episodes as we continue going, and I hope that that's something you're interested for. Um, I'm not entirely sure about characters yet, more possibly entities as characters, but I'm still intrigued as to what you guys think of that. Um, I do, I'm a storyteller by nature, so telling stories, especially the story of a city, as it continues to mature and grow, and that's why I chose to set it back so far early in the early 2000s. Um, purposefully so that the city could continue to grow and by the time that we get to current timeline of 2024 2025 whenever you're watching this if you're in the future person um, then by all means I very much appreciate the fact that you're watching this but it'll actually help you continue to see the city as it grows and matures. here is our tourism district as it's maturing up and now a zoo tour in first person I know this doesn't sound like your normal zoo music, I guess, but this is a blast from the past for me to share with you. This specific music track called Rock the Beat was produced on an original PlayStation 1, if I remember correctly, on a uh, game app that you could download uh, called M2, MTV Music Generator. And I've had, on, had it for since 1998, 97, 98, something like that. Just thought you might want to hear it and, 
and uh, I know it's it's horrible. It has not aged well, but thank you guys for at least putting up with it, and I appreciate you. Um, hopefully, you've enjoyed the tour, even with the uh, weird uh, drum and bass uh, beat. Enjoy. Thought the reindeer were pretty big, and they are kind of fuzzy. Look kind of cute, got fuzzy butts. But then these moose. A zoo check in as we go in and rename the street facing Jeffrey Zoo to Zoo Street. We added in an additional hostel type of uh, town hostel um, hotel that will hopefully add in more tourism and get people in and more importantly, more income for the city of Chamoy. Here we extend the Zoo Road into the Zesty Commerce Square with a very simple and yet elegant curved road. This is a brief look at our city economy how our budget and loans are, we don't haven't taken any loans, our income and expenses, we're making a, a little over 11,000 more than we're actually bringing or paying out. So we're getting there. It's, it's growing. A lot of level uh, twos in there, some level threes as well, buildings, a little bit of taxi and some uh, tourism bus. These are the sightseeing bus lines and the walking tours that we have inside of the city currently. As I mentioned, we have established some tourism infrastructure and we'd like to continue to build onto that because it not only helps keep our citizens fit, but helps bring in tourism dollars as well. And the Tolleson Plateau as it currently sits now, as we've added, and the Jeffrey Zoo gives us a full opportunity to expand onto that because this is not the only zoo or the only uh, park area, large park area we're going to have in the city of Chamoy as we continue to grow. I'm probably looking at either a nature preserve or an amusement park. Here is the overall look from the beginning of the episode so you get a really good, beautiful look across the city of Chamoy. Taking a moment to go in and rename some of the uh, assets as we mentioned. If you want something named after you, please comment down below, whether it be a street, a person, a building, uh, a district, a housing area, a commerce area, anything like that. Taking a quick look at our beautiful side gate for the Jeffrey Zoo. We're at the last final minutes or seconds, I should say, of the episode. And I want to thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to view this chapter of Shamoy. And I hope that you'll enjoy more in the future. Please comment down below if you'd like something named after you or if you have ideas. Do you like how I detail? Do you like how I add on to the new areas in each chapter? Or do you think I could be doing more? Am I doing too much? Should I be doing less? Let me know down in the comments down below. And don't forget, we also have the playlist, not just for this city, but for all of our cities so you can keep up to date. Here is the updated view of the zoo, and it does have a fence, which we'll be adding on to as the zoo continues to grow. Thank you so much for your time. And for a special shout out to the Grand Canyon Casino, who decided to take root in Chamoy and help build the Jeffrey Zoo. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Don't forget to be awesome, and don't forget that nothing is permanent. You can change anything about yourself or your viewpoint as you see fit. It'll make you a better person in the long run. See you next week. Please.
Station. We'll be right back after these messages.